The Deep Cool Quad Stellar is an absolute bonkers PC case. To look at it, you might think something had dropped from outer space and landed straight on your desk. Kiguru reviewed the original Quad Stellar. That was a case absolutely packed full of features, but it was a tad expensive. Deep Cool has slashed the price of the Quad Stellar Infinity, but what else has been cut from this crazy looking case to make it more affordable? Well, if you stick around and watch this video, we'll find out. The Deep Cool Quad Stellar Infinity is basically a quad stellar that's been on a massive diet. Deep Cool has obviously had to make some adaptions to the case to reduce the price. We'll go through those in a bit. You can pick the Quad Stellar Infinity up now from places like scan.co.uk and it's priced just under £270 here in the UK. The original I think was priced at about 420 or just under. Leo reviewed that when it was released and he found it interesting to say the least. As I say, there's been a lot of changes and adaptions from the original to get the price down on the Infinity. One of those changes, or the changes I should say, start on the front panel. So these vents that can be opened and closed here to allow more airflow into the system, on the original quad seller, they were operated mechanically. You had an app on your phone that adjusted the fan speed, the RGB lighting effects, and it could also adjust when these vents open, depending on the temperature inside the system. These are not mechanically controlled anymore. These are simply just some vents that you operate manually and you're just on like a, a push pin fitting system. So you just push them in and they pop open. The vents almost look like tempered glass, but they're not, they're plastic. They've got a, a very shiny piano black style plastic design to them, but they still look as effective as the original one. So in terms of aesthetics, it still looks the same, the front of the case, but it is obviously a lot cheaper to manufacture because there simply isn't as many moving parts in there and they're not mechanically controlled, but you still get the same effect, which was always a thing with the Quad Stella. One of the other minor changes on the front panel is the power button. I love this power button in the center here. I don't think I've seen a power button better than that to power on your PC. But the only slight change with this one compared to the original is the logo. It's got the new Deepcool logo on there. The original was produced when Deepcool was still using the GamerStorm branding. GamerStorm's gone now, so the logo isn't a GamerStorm logo. It's just a Deepcool logo on the front, which I think actually I prefer that logo. You still get the RGB lighting effects on the front. Another thing missing from the front panel is the dust filters. Originally behind these, vents that open were dust filters, they have gone. Something else that's missing from the Infinity is fans. So on the original, you got four pre-installed fans in the front panel. Again, no sign of any fans when you buy this. You'll have to add your own fans. Obviously that's gonna increase the price, but then it also gives you the option of using the fans that you want to use rather than the one supplied by Deepcool. So if you have a favorite fan, that's not a problem. As well as the Quadstell Infinity missing the fans, it's also missing the RGB controller. So the original Quadstella, as I say, came with a RGB stroke fan hub that was app controlled. You had an app on your phone and you could control the RGB lighting, fan speed, etc. with that. That RGB hub, again, that's not included with the Infinity. So again, Deepcool saving costs in that area and passing it on to the consumer. The only th other thing I think that's missing from it is the hard drive caddy. So in one of these pods or sections of the case, you had quite a big hard drive caddy that came out and I think it held six or eight 3.5 inch drives and a couple of 2.5 inch drives as well. That's gone, but there is some space on the motherboard tray for storage devices and we'll have a look at that in a minute, see what you can actually fit inside the system. So because this is such a unique case and I guess the majority of people that will buy this, they won't be buying it because of its practicality. I think it will be bought completely on the looks. So because of that and because of how unique this case is, I think it's gonna be really difficult to treat this as a normal standard case review. So what I'm planning on doing is building quite an elaborate system inside with dual radiators and then giving my opinion on how the case is to build a system, what it's like to work with, is it any more difficult to build in this quad section or quad pod design 
compared to a normal standard ATX case. But before I get on to building the system, I want to show you round the case and talk a little bit about the specifications so that you know what you can fit inside the system, what you can't. If you saw the original review of the Quad Stellar, you'll know that it is kind of based on like a four section or a four compartment or four pod design. You can install different bits of hardware in each section of the case. First thing to do is to get into it and the thing you have to do is remove thumb screws from the rear. So these are all the uh, side panels held on with thumb screws. None of these thumb screws are captive, but it doesn't really matter. So when you've taken all eight thumb screws out, so there's two in each compartment, what you have to do is actually slide these backwards and make a horrendous noise when they come off. But there you go. So the side panels are constructed from steel. It's actually quite thick steel, but because of the shape and design, it has got a bit of flex to it and when you're reinstalling these you do have to open the side panel up a bit and slide it on into position so they are mainly made out of steel with some tempered glass i believe the original quad seller you could remove this glass it was held on with magnets but these look like they're a bit more permanent and held on with some uh, some screws slide the second panel off what you do have to realize about this case is when you're building a system, because all these pieces come off and it is quite a big case, you need quite a bit of space to work in. As you can see already, I've just took two side panels off and the work area is getting a bit crowded. So once you've got the top two panels off, you need to flip it onto its side and then you can remove a bottom panel. The only real difference with the top and bottom panels. The top ones have tempered glass on both sides where the bottom ones have some rubber feet and tempered glass. Then again, you can just lift that up and lift the other bottom one. You'll notice that the side panel on this side has a vent at the bottom and it kind of does have a dust filter on there. It's just a perforated metal mesh dust filter. Although it has this very strange quad compartment design, You've still got really good access in to individual compartment with the side panels removed so you install the power supply down here i've not installed a system inside this case yet so i don't know how it's going to go but it might be a bit of a stretch from the cables because from this compartment here you can send power cables up to this top compartment and you could potentially install your graphics card in here now the original quad seller came with a PCIe riser kit and cable, the Infinity doesn't. So if you want to install up in this top compartment, if you want to put your graphics card in here, you are going to have to invest in a PCIe riser and cable kit. So that's something again to think about. Below this section is the motherboard section. So to get better access to that, there is actually a couple of screws at the back here. So if you just remove these two screws, And then a couple more screws at the front. So all four screws removed. And then this panel just slides out like that. And then when you've got that panel removed, you can see accessibility into the motherboard tray area is massively improved. Again, as I say, even though it's got this weird arrangement, it's quite easy to get inside by the looks of it and install the system in place there. The motherboard tray supports up to EATX motherboards. So that obviously includes all other formats, anything from mini ITX, micro ATX, and then normal ATX will fit inside here as well as EATX motherboards. Up at the top here, there's a bracket also, this bracket's removable, take four screws out, and that will release out from the case. On this bracket, you can install up to a 360 millimeter radiator, and then there is an additional 360 millimeter radiator bracket. There's a couple of thumb screws underneath. Twist those out, they are captive thumb screws. Twist those out, and then there's two more at the front. Take those out, and then You've got another bracket here for another 360 millimeter radiator so you can fit a 360 rad in the front and a 360 rad up here 
that's what I'm intending on doing. I'm going to stick the 360 millimeter AIO CPU color rad here, and then I've got a 6950 XT hybrid graphics card with a 360 mil rad that I'm going to hopefully install in here. As you can also see, there's vents at the front panel behind these flaps and in each of these vents you can install 120 mil fans. Deepcool doesn't supply any fans with the Quad Stellar Infinity so I'm going to be using some Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 Pro I think they are in here. I'm going to put four in here and then there's also a fan mount at the back here can fit another 120 millimeter fan. I might try and put one in there but I don't know whether it's going to interfere with the radiator I'll give that a shot. And there's also, if you want, two 80 millimeter fan mounts down at the bottom. I don't think I'll be using that because I don't have any 80 millimeter fans that would be suitable to go in there. So for some other specifications that might be useful, maximum CPU cooler height is only 135 millimeters tall. Now by normal ATXK standards, that doesn't sound very tall. The average I would say is probably usually 160 to 165 millimeters tall. So it's not gonna be easy to install a big air cooler in here. There's a total of 14 PCIe slot cutouts. So at the back on the normal rear IO position, there's eight slots there. And then on this remote GPU area, you've got another six slot cutouts. The maximum GPU length according to Deepcool official specifications is 380 millimeters long. One thing that might be a slight problem is installing NVIDIA 40 series cards up here because you are limited with the height there. When you've got a 40 series card that may measure 150 millimeters tall plus cables, I think it's going to be a bit of a squeeze, but we'll have a look at that again in a bit. Power supply length or the maximum power supply length is 210 millimeters. I'm not sure where that dimension comes from because as you can see, if you spin the case round, you've got lots of space for a power supply. I mean, I'm no mathematician, but I know that is longer than 210 millimeters, but maybe it's just for ease of cable management or something like that, that Deepcool has said it, but I'm sure you can get a power supply that's longer than 210 millimeters in there if you need to. And then the other thing is storage. So as I say, the original, you had the huge hard drive carry that held six or eight 3.5 inch drives, and that all came out in one piece and you could install the hard drives individually and slot the whole thing back in place. As I say, that's gone. But now you have mounting spots on the motherboard tray. So up the side here and along the top, you can install either three 3.5 inch drives or three 2.5 inch drives. So there's probably still enough space for most gaming systems. Not many people with gaming systems will probably use anything more than that. And a lot of storage is now on M.2 drives anyway. So I don't think that's a big deal. It also allows this space to be used as a installation position for radiators as well. So I think that is a good addition in this day and age, probably reducing the amount of three and a half inch drives for extra radiator place is a good thing. That's the basic details of the Quad Stellar Infinity covered. If you do want to learn more about the case, don't forget over on kitguru.net, there will be a written review with full specifications, all the features, all the details will be over on the KitGuru website. But I think we've covered the important details that you need to know if you want to use this case to build a system. So onto the system specification. So for this one, I'm going for an Intel and AMD combination. So the CPU is going to be an Intel Core i9-13900KS. Motherboard is the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Master. First time I'll use this board in a build. Can't wait to use that. Looks really nice, that board. For memory, I'm using Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. This is a 32 gigabyte kit, so two 16 gigabyte DIMMs, and it's DDR5-6000. Graphics card is this Sapphire Toxic 6950 XT and as I say this has a 360 millimeter liquid cooler on it and I'm going to try and mount it in the top compartment with a uh, remote mounting kit. For storage just going to use a single M.2 storage device so this is a WD Black SN850 2 terabyte PCIe Gen 4 M.2 NVMe drive. Because there's no fans in the case we'll be using a combination of fans so the fans on the graphics card cooler will be the stock Sapphire fans, but for the case fans, I'm going to be using these 
Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4. Again, I've not used these fans yet. These were sent over by Be Quiet a while ago, so I'm looking forward to using those. Then the power supply is a new unit from Endorphi. Kit Guru will have a full written review of this power supply soon, so if you are interested in this, make sure you check that out when it comes. This is the Supremo FM5 Gold one kilowatt 80 plus gold rated unit then the cpu cooler is the deep cool infinity series lt720 so 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler and it's got that funky infinity mirror design on the cpu block i reviewed this cpu cooler myself a few months ago and it performed excellent so that's the spec of the system i've not tried installing the card or anything in there yet so i don't know how it's going to go but I'm hoping that everything goes to plan. So let's get on with the build.
Okay, so the Quadstellar Infinity build is complete. You can see the system's up and running. It was not a bad case to build in, really, because of the sort of modular design. You can remove all these outer panels and you can take off some of the inner panels. Getting access to things is pretty good. There's a lot of space once you get all these panels off and start working in the system. If you're just going to install the graphics card directly on the motherboard, like you would normally, then it's probably no more difficult installing a system inside here than it is working on a, just a standard ATX case. The only other difference really is everything's at a bit of an angle, and because of those angles, you do find yourself having to lift the case and turn it and rotate it round to get to certain areas. But the space inside the case is very good. Once you've got all these panels removed, there's no problem installing anything really. And in terms of the build quality, so the alignment of the motherboard standoffs and PCIe slot cutouts, putting panels back on and things like that, was pretty good. Putting these outer panels back on, you do have to kind of open them up and just you know fiddle them into position but overall build quality is really good there are one or two things that i noted during the installation process not so much issues but more things that you need to take into consideration when you're planning and building a system inside the quad stellar infinity i'll come back to those in a minute but first i just want to quickly have a look at the thermal performance i've got the 3d mark times by extreme stress test running in a loop it's been running now for about 25 minutes and that's simulating a 4k gaming load the GPU temperature has leveled off now at about 70 degrees. That's not bad for this GPU. I have seen it perform better in other cases. So maybe the radiator layout and the airflow isn't optimal in this case. CPU temperature is between 45 to 50 degrees, but under this load, the CPU is only on tick over. Back to those things that I noted during the installation. As I've said already, because you can remove all the outer panels and it's got a semi-modular design internally, you can remove radiator brackets and other panels inside the system. It creates a lot of space and it is quite easy to work on. Installing a graphics card directly to the motherboard, I expect it to be a very simple installation process and no different really to installing in a standard ATX case. However, I suspect the majority of people that buy this case will want Want to install the graphics card remotely in this top compartment Deepcool doesn't include the riser kit so that is a bit of a letdown i can see the reason why Deepcool's done that it's reducing the cost of the case initially but then if you want to buy the riser kit separately that's you know increasing the cost back up again anyway there's also a height restriction in this gpu compartment for the 6950 xt it's not a problem but it is quite close to the top panel once you've got the pcie cables connected but i imagine certain nvidia 40 series cards will struggle to fit in there it's going to be a really tight fit some nvidia 40 series cards alone measure 150 millimeters tall so adding on extra space for the 12 volt high power connector it's going to be a very tight fit so make sure you check dimensions before you buy the case if you are thinking of using this with nvidia 40 series another thing about this as well having the gpu mounted remotely you need to also make sure that your pcie power cables are long enough the endorphy power supply that i used here the pcie cables measured 560 millimeters and to be fair they were probably the perfect length anything less it might be a stretch with a taller card it might be a stretch then as well so that's again something you need to check something else to consider when you're planning and building the system is the radiator and fan placement because I've got a radiator fitted at the front, it meant that I could only fit one other intake fan in here. The front radiator blocks any other fan being installed in this compartment. Obviously, your radiator is working as an intake, so you have got plenty of air intake. But if you want to make the system look symmetrical inside and you want fans on each compartment, that's not going to be possible with radiators installed at the front. Also, the uh, front radiator stops you being able to install a fan in this compartment here as well. And another thing with the GPU radiator installed in this compartment, it stopped me from being able to install a 120 millimeter exhaust at the back there. Yes, there is space for two 80 millimeter fans as exhaust down here, but 80 millimeter fans are not very common, especially if you want some RGB fans. So. That's something else you have to think about when you're planning the system. The only other thing worth mentioning is the amount of tempered glass in the case. Obviously, when you're pulling these side panels on and off and building the system, you're going to get a lot of fingerprints on those that's going to need cleaning off. And also the shiny black plastic on these flaps at the front, they are fingerprint magnets as well. And cleaning it off does scratch the plastic finish. So even with a really soft cloth, 
I've got quite a few scratches on those already, so it's just something to be careful of. But other than that, it's an absolutely unique looking case. There's nothing else on the market quite like it. It probably won't fit in in an office scenario or in a contemporary living room or something like that. But if you've got a very specific style gaming room or man cave or kid's bedroom or something like that, this will look absolutely stunning in there. So thanks for watching this Deep Cool Quad Stellar Infinity build. Let me know what you think of the case in the comment section. Is this something you'd have in your setup? If you've enjoyed watching this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. If you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru, you can always help support us by heading over to the store and picking up some merch. Or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.